demonized for centuries, the first emperor is an imposing figure, even in classical accounts. Our chief written source for him is the Record of the Historian, a vast chronicle of ancient China by the Han Dynasty author Sima Qian, including biographies of many of the major figures of the era. But the first emperor is also a shadow. In his own lifetime, he was aloof and hidden from view, protected by distance from killers and admirers alike. When none dared look at him or speak his true name, it is unsurprising that we have little idea of his facial features or character. There is little in ancient accounts about his personality. Instead, all we have are the bold architectural statements and the brutal political decisions. A biography of the first emperor is, by necessity, also a biography of those closest to him. Of the past works, more than 40% of Cotterell's First Emperor of China is devoted to the politics and history of the Warring States, while the protagonist of Bodhi's China's First Unifier is not the emperor at all, but his wily chief minister, Li Si. As for original sources, we have decrees issued in the name of the First Emperor, but little of his personality, although the record of the historian includes biographies of his ministers, his generals, and even the man who tried to kill him. The first emperor himself is that silence in between, the subject they dare not mention or the distant sovereign in whose name they claim to act. Writing about the first emperor today is hampered further by the concerns of the Han dynasty, the successor state that survived in one form or another for 400 years after him. Although the emperors of the Han retained a great deal of Qin's organizational structure, laws, and practices, it was vital for them to establish a clear ideological distance between themselves and the dynasty they had supplanted, 